So I feel like it's very legitimate to like describe the experience of having to teach yourself all about this shit and like all the people that did teach themselves how to make like write bars and count day 16 because you know how hard it is when you don't have somebody to tell you to count your bars like I had I was already in my 20s when somebody told me I'm putting too many words and stuff in my bars yeah I mean I I remember one time I was already putting music out and this guy's like I don't think you're on rhythm and I'm like what the fuck do you mean he's like yo I thought it was because maybe you were going fast, but then I listened to all this fast shit, and no, you're not on rhythm. Listen to when the beat punches and when your rhymes hit. You're off, and we're talking like I thought I was good and shit, and I got like screwed. <laughs> and this guy isn't even a rapper. He's just a guy who listens to music, and he schooled me like that. And I'm like, I'm going to say a word. I was like 26, too, right? Before I even, and then I'm like, oh, that's what, then I started my pocket quest where you start trying to understand what the pocket's about. And like, so yeah, I hear you, man. Like without actually having somebody like take you to the side and like actually show you some shit, it's, it's really like, you might think you're doing great because you don't hear what you're not hearing. Three notebooks in Rikers Island of rhymes. I gave it to my lawyer so she can back to me when I get upstate to realize I'm sitting there and it's not somebody older. It was somebody very younger. Like I was 23 to no, 24. The kid was about 21, 22. And I'm like, he's, and I'm rapping it to him and he realized I keep messing up. He's like, bro, you got too many words in your, your bar. He said, can I see that real quick? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I realized this boy cutting out the lines and I'm looking at it. I said, yo, how do you do that? He said, bro, you just do understand any somebody younger than me taught me how to count my bars, spit my bars. And I'm not I'm not ashamed to say that because you know what I'm saying? Because you gotta learn from somewhere. And him taking the time and he was next to me in my bunkie for like six months and then he went home. So for them six months, I had every advantage to go over every music I ever wrote within jail or when I was writing while he was next to me to figure out and look trust me it still took longer than what the fuck it was but it took that six months trust me that six months I did two and a half years upstate did the two down down so I had five all together I took that six months and I forced myself to learn how to put my bars together while I'm putting too many words into my lines Riding the beat and all that, I was performing and, and rap and singing and stuff, so I knew how to flow on a beat. That was never the problem. Putting too many words in it, because you reading it and saying it out loud are two different things. Facts. Or sometimes you say it, right? Like, you think it sounds good, but you're not hearing what it really sounds like. And then right. the problem it's is, because you wrote, wrote it, you hear it really good, because you know it. Right. And then you don't hear what other people are here. That was the, that took me a long time to understand, like way too fucking long, in my opinion, to really understand what it was to like not stuff syllables and to try hard with it. Once I learned how to do that and I came home, my friend, shout out to Syke, shout out to Harry if he's watching this, Cash Generals. It's like a little brother to me. We, when I did music, I influenced him. But I didn't know when I left and he went another way, he kept it going. So he's really, he got his shit all the way up. Shout out to him. And so when I came home, he gave me notebooks. He gave me a, a, a what is some things called? Jesus Christ, an iPad touch hmm. thing where you put the music on from the computer for the, I, and he gave me that, some notebooks. So I don't want to like delve too much into like jail and shit because it's what it is. But are you saying like you went in before the iPad? phone and shit like really popped off and then you come out and then it's like a bro, whole new fucking world bro when i went when i went to, i'm trying to tell you the phones i remember before i went to jail i went to jail 2008 so the sidekicks before the sidekicks it was the boost mobile commercials remember yeah, those yeah. The way you got the whole city behind us i got locked up when uh when the when I was still with the sidekicks, when the right. sidekicks was, so that whole five years from 08 to 13, I came home to something totally different. That must have been fucked up. I went then to a PlayStation 2, came out to a PlayStation 3, 
Xbox 660 to an Xbox boy. Don't get me started. Is that like cool? <laughs> was it like, yo, this is dope, or was it like fucking weird? I felt out of time. I only did five years, but the, within that five years, was a really dr- dramatic change. Like people was iPhone in, um, Samsungs was out. Like I was grateful enough to have a Nokia. I was thinking about the Game Cubes, and then when I come out, there's PlayStation things, and like it was a little wicked for me. You know what I'm saying? Because even though the even though I'm in jail, I'm watching TV, I'm watching everything that's going on out there, but I'm not out there. Right. So it's like jail is a place that keeps you trapped in time. Interesting. That's that's the best way I can say it because everything will go by you, but while you're in there, you're stuck. No matter what you hear, you stuck because you're not moving along with life. You're stuck, but you're just hearing pieces and stuff. If you drive through a town. And you hear a couple of things while you're driving through town. You're just driving through town, but technically you're in the car. You're not seeing anything in town. Right. You're passing by. Same thing with jail in a perspective. You might hear music. You might see the new music videos, see the new kicks and all that. But you're not touching none of that until you get out. You're not experiencing what it looks like, how it feels, or anything until you're out. So right now, it's just you in a car passing by. Right. Man, that's crazy. And then between that also, you go from music being fucking extremely expensive to produce to you can do it in your fucking bedroom. I went to jail. There was LimeWire. <laughs> yeah. You remember LimeWire? I do. I will never forget that. Right, LimeWire. You know what I'm saying? Get back. And it's like YouTube has the entire fucking literally, music, everything on it. <laughs> literally, I went to jail. It was my space. I came home. YouTube and a Facebook. And you're like, oh boy, different times. What the fuck is this? You know, I think it's interesting that you said that just because, like, for me, a lot of the benefit of doing this show, I see even called Bridge the Gap, is just like, you know, I just feel like I don't know a lot being like a person that had my experiences in Montreal. Like, I didn't see the other sides of Montreal. I don't know what it would be like to have a five year jail gap and how that could impact it, but I certainly know people who do have that experience and I have to maybe deal with some people who have had experiences like that. And then it's like, okay, sometimes you get frustrated if you're a person you don't understand why certain people may struggle to adapt to circumstances or things like that. But I could see how, like, five years away from life or even a year away or two years especially with the way things are going now it could like really take it to a point where it's super hard to just acclimate to the pace for a very long time that's a wild consequence of jail that i've never thought about when i'm telling you the reason why i say that because i wasn't i was never a materialistic guy i was like working on my music here and there but once I went to jail and came out and noticed the difference, not even, oh, I see you in Mad Long Room, that, the, the growth, the things that are doing now, the laws and everything, it, it switches up on you. And even if you'd be like, oh, you you watching TV, but you, you see what's on TV, seeing on TV and actually living in two different things. So the con- jail, like like I said, I when, it, when I went to jail, I had I had a I a I 870. Tell you what kind of phone I had. I had an i870, a Boost mobile phone. Right. The phone to seeing Samsungs and and iPhones. I'm like, what the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I went, I went to jail with MySpace. Came out, seen a Facebook. How is that? So how how do you do you like?